Hi, I'm Chef Brett McCarthy, and welcome to WKCTC's Culinary Arts Program, West Kentucky's premier culinary arts show. Welcome back. We're going to be making uh, chicken marsala today. We also have a wonderful risotto, wild mushroom risotto that we're going to be making, so I'm just very excited to show you this. I have kind of a, a little bit of a different technique to work uh, to actually produce uh, chicken marsala, so I'm going to show you a few things and a few tricks to make that marsala wine sauce just nice and thick and wonderful that it'll coat the chicken and won't be runny like sometimes chicken marsala can be. So the first thing we're going to start out with is approximately one pound of uh, chicken breast. And here it is right here. We've lightly pounded it. Now you don't want to pound the heck out of it, but you do want it to have it lightly pounded. And I'm just going to bring it onto the cutting board here and just trim off any excess fat there. We want it completely clean of all the fat. And uh, these have been cleaned up pretty well by the butcher, so I'm very pleased with that. And again, just lightly pounded. We've already pounded them out, so I'm not going to do that for you on the show. Over here, these are our main ingredients. And we have one cup of flour, approximately one tablespoon of dried Italian seasoning. And this is just a mixture of oregano and dried basil and thyme and rosemary. Okay. About a half a teaspoon of white pepper half a teaspoon of salt, okay? Approximately a half a cup of mushrooms. This is a little bit more than we actually need, okay? And we have, just check my notes real here, we have two ounces of Marsala wine, okay? And four ounces of white stock. I'm using chicken stock, and you can purchase uh, the chicken broth. You don't have to make it, but it's nice if it's made, okay? We also have about two ounces of butter, all right? a uh, tablespoon of chopped garlic, and this is just a little bit of salt and white pepper for seasoning. First thing I'm going to do is start out with is putting that flour right in here. All right. I'm going to add the white pepper, the salt, and the Italian seasonings. I'm going to mix that in there. Just going to flavor that well. Okay my hands off real quick. Okay, and we're going to take our, our chicken. I'm going to place that right in there. By the way, and you probably already know this, that uh, when you're breading chicken or flouring chicken, you certainly don't want to keep the flour. However, if it's like vegetables or something, you're, you're more than uh, welcome to take that flour and uh, shake out any of the, the wet uh, clumps that are in there through a, through a strainer or something like that. And that works out very well to recover that flour. Uh, but with uh, raw chicken, of course, you don't want to do that. So you don't necessarily have to always throw away the flour. Depends on what you're doing. Okay. So I'm just going to do that right like that and then shake it. All right. And we're just lightly coating it. I'm not breading this chicken, so I don't need to put it through an egg wash first. Okay, I'm just lightly coating it with flour. This is actually going to help make the sauce. All right, adding a little bit of a thickener. Okay, we're going to be going over to the stove, and I'm going to show you the next technique from there. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, saute that chicken. And I also have um, some extra virgin olive oil. This is something that I didn't mention, okay? So about two to three ounces of extra virgin olive oil, I'm just gonna estimate, okay? You want a moderately to moderately medium to high heat, okay? It's very critical uh, that it's, it's pretty hot. And we're gonna take that olive oil and we're just gonna swirl that in there. Well, little pourer thing isn't working too well. Seem to have pro problems with these from show to show. Well, that's how it works. Okay. And so you can see this is getting hot. I actually preheated my pan, so that's why this is heating up so quickly. All right. I'm just going to put this 
right in there like that. Want to sear that chicken. Chicken breast is naturally tender, so there's really not much to do with it as far as uh, tenderizing it. Uh, we lightly pound it so that it won't be so tough. Um, we can do that with uh, veal scallopini too. The, the recipe that I'm going to show you can be worth, used with chicken or veal um, very easily. Gonna get that nice and brown. I'm using a coated pan, a non-stick pan. Works easier. Um, you don't necessarily have to have a coated pan. Find that it works easier for like chicken breast. Anything that doesn't have a lot of fat is going to stick pretty easily. So even though I have the olive oil there, it kind of makes it easier for me to move it around. Um, obviously, a coated pan isn't going to get as hot, though, as, as fast. And so it takes a little bit longer to do the browning. And that's because the, the coating actually kind of insulates the pan a little bit. So it takes a while for that browning to occur in a coated pan versus a just a regular bare pan, uncoated pan. Okay. Okay. Now you see what that flour is doing is it's actually creating a nice coating on the, even though this is not a breaded dish. So that'll actually provide a surface that the sauce will stick to. Um, the flour also will create what we call a roux in the industry, so that'll actually end up having um, a thickening effect in the sauce as well. So what is left behind in the pan after we remove the chicken will actually have some starch in it and that will help thicken the, um, the sauce. Right. Gonna brown that up. Nice and crispy. There's a wonderful dish. Now I'm going to show you a few techniques to make it even more wonderful than you might have if you've made this at home. Okay, while that is cooking, I'm going to drain that oil down just a little bit, some of those chicken juices. And I'm going to start making my sauce. There are two paths a child can take. For over 25 years, we've been helping children choose the right one. Communities and schools, helping kids stay in school and prepare for life.
pork them back and I've just added my garlic and I'm going to add about a half a cup of mushrooms. Like I said, I'm not going to use all these mushrooms here. It's a little bit more than I need. All right. Just right in there and just put that around there. Now I'm going to turn that heat up a little bit. You got to kind of moderate the heat, go back and forth a little bit because you don't want to overcook the chicken while you're trying to do the sauce. So I want to be a little bit careful. If you find that the chicken is is cooking a little bit too fast, you know, kind of just um, move the chicken around a little bit. There's um, some of the chicken pieces might be of a less ounce weight than some of the other bigger pieces. So I'm just moving around. All pans develop hot spots. So there are some spots that might form that the, the chicken might be cooking faster than other spots. So just kind of monitor that and uh, be um, conscientious of that. All right, so I'm just going to put that in there and just those mushrooms moving around there. And I got the garlic in there. Okay. Going to add our chicken stock. Okay, that's about four ounces or half a cup of chicken stock. Sometimes what chefs will do is they'll actually remove the chicken at this point and make the sauce. Okay. If you do that, that's fine, but take the chicken out and keep it warm. And also make sure that the chicken is completely cooked through because the next step will be actual service. You may just briefly coat the chicken with the sauce and you don't want it to be you know, uncooked inside. This way, when I do it in the pan while I'm making the sauce, I know the chicken's going to be done. So this is why I do it. Plus it adds a lot of nice flavor too. Okay? I'm just going gonna, gonna to keep turning that chicken, making sure that um, doesn't overcook on one side and get undercooked another side. And I'm just checking in there, making sure that it's done. All right, so I got the mushrooms in there. Okay, I'm going to add that Marsala wine. Okay, I use sweet Marsala wine. Okay, a lot of recipes, veal Marsala, chicken Marsala, talks for dry. Marsala wine. I kind of like that extra sweetness. So that's a little bit of a change from what you might be used to. And I use a nice high quality Marsala wine. Although you can go to the grocery store and you can get those cooking wines, and they taste more like vinegar than they do wine. So be very, very careful of that. You know, go to a nice uh, um, liquor store, get yourself a good sweet Marsala wine. I think you'll enjoy it a lot better. Okay. Remember what I told you when we talk about, I told you about how in a previous show, we talked about vanilla, um, where it's okay to use an imitation vanilla, maybe in cookie batter or something like that. Same holds true for, for wine. Depending on uh, how prominent that particular ingredient is in the dish, in this case it's called Marsala chicken after the Marsala wine, obviously the quality of that wine has to be right there. Okay. Okay, so I've cooked that around and we stir that around. Okay. At this point, I'm going to add a little bit of that cold, unsalted butter. Okay. And I do not want to bring it to a boil at this point. This is kind of like the raspberry chicken that I made. Okay. This is a butter sauce. Okay. And as such, a butter sauce will break on you. Okay, butter starts to melt at around 140 degrees. So if we um, are not careful, if we bring this back to a boil, we're going to have a broken sauce. All right, but I'm going to give you a little bit of a tip. And this is going to be something that I also did for the raspberry chicken. I'm going to add just a little bit of cream. I'm not going to turn this into a cream sauce. Marsala sauce is not creamy, okay? But what we usually do is we add a little bit of cream, and what that'll do is just make, give us a little bit of an insurance policy. Okay. okay and we're just going to reduce that just a, a little bit. Okay. And now what I can do is I can reduce and thicken that sauce up just a little bit, and I don't have to worry about about the sauce breaking on me. Okay. You get a little salt and pepper there. Just to flavor it up. Yeah, 
about three pinches. All right. Okay. And that's about it. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to plate this and uh, make it look real purdy. All right. Christopher, your word is sipic. Could you use it in a sentence, please? In the unlikely event that your brokerage firm goes out of business, sipic is there to protect you. Sipic. C I I'm sorry, Christopher, that is incorrect. Lisa Fannin. Lisa, your word also is sipic. May I have that in another sentence, please? SIPIC funds are available to satisfy brokerage customer claims up to a maximum of $500,000, including up to $100,000 for cash claims. SIPIC. S-I-P-K. Don't know about SIPIC, the Securities Investor Protection Corporation? That's okay. We can spell it out for you. Learn more at www.sipc.org. Okay, welcome back here. As you can see, that sauce is thickened up just fine. And you'll know if it's broken because it'll, it'll look really, really bad. It'll kind of look like um, an Italian vinaigrette, all kind of separate and everything. So it won't uh, be nice and creamy like this. So this is really beautiful. This came out really, really nice. Okay, I'm just gonna take two chicken breasts here. Obviously, one would be enough for a, a portion, okay and just a little bit of sauce here. Make sure you get some of those nice mushrooms. Just pour it right over like that. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of parsley. Sprinkle that. And just because this is an Italian dish, I'm gonna take a little bit of cilantro. Just put that right in the center. And that is just gorgeous. Bon appetit. Okay, so what we have here, we're going to be making a wild mushroom risotto, which is very, very nice. And uh, um, risotto is made with arborio rice. You can actually get this in the grocery store, so not very hard, right where you get any kind of rice. This is a short grain rice. It's very sticky, okay? And it's usually served in like a creamy kind of broth, so it's almost like a stewy consistency when you're making it. Um, and uh, you can serve it as a side dish, but traditionally what uh, Italians will do is use this as a appetizer. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that so you know what you're looking at. So we have about a cup and a half of arborio rice. Okay, we have some dried mushrooms. Okay, this is about, oh, I'd say about a third a cup of uh, dried mushrooms. Um, we also have some chicken broth. The chicken broth, there's five cups of chicken broth. I already have that on the stove because I, it has to be hot. So it's something that we have to have hot and ready to go. So I'll show you that when we go over to the stove. Uh, two tablespoons of shallots. Uh, we also have three tablespoons of unsalted butter. Uh, garlic here, a little bit of garlic. A couple of cloves of that, half a cup of white wine. All right, about... Um, about a half a cup to a cup of Romano cheese. Um, usually it just depends on the consistency uh, and how much uh, Romano cheese you use. And then also a little bit of the heavy cream, a quarter cup of heavy cream, and then just salt and pepper just for, for seasoning. Okay, so we're gonna go over to the stove and I'll show you how this all comes together. Okay, so I'm just gonna bring my ingredients right over here. I like to use sheet pans because I can have everything ready for my to maneuver around. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our butter in here. Let's melt that. Get it fully melted. I'm going to 
add our shallots. And we're going to add our garlic. And we want to cook that out a couple minutes or so. Moderately high heat. Cook it out a little bit. You just want to kind of get that flavors going, blossoming. Lots of chefs will do when it comes to onions until they're translucent. And again, I like to use shallots. Uh, shallots will be a nice sweet flavor, but it won't be out overpowering. Whenever you want kind of a little bit of an onion flavor, okay, but you don't want it to be overpowering, shallots uh, fit the bill very nicely. Okay. And then I'm going to add my white wine and my dried mushrooms. You don't have to worry about rehydrating the mushrooms because they will rehydrate as uh, you are cooking. Okay. All right. I'm just going to turn that heat up. Again, I have to adjust the heat as necessary. All right. And now I'm going to put in my rice. And I'm just going to stir that around. This is not like any other rice dish where you actually um, put all the stock in. Um, you don't put the stock in and then just leave it. I wish that is the case. That's not the case with this. However, you can make this a little bit ahead of time. So if you want to get, get it done and then just reheat it, you can do that by just adding, rehydrating it with a little bit more stock. So if you don't want to be spending time away from your guests, this is something that you can do ahead of time. In fact, a lot of restaurants will do that. They'll make a base of risotto that's already al dente or to the bite. And then as they uh, need it, as the orders come in, they'll just add the final ingredients, a little more stock, and they're done. Okay? So we're going to add the stock. I told you we have about five cups of hot stock here. All right, and we're going to add this. And you add just enough stock for it to start to absorb. Take that cloth away so I don't set it on fire. Okay. And you will bring it to keep it at a boil or at a simmer. If it's not at a simmer, it's not going to absorb into the rice. Okay. I'm just going to keep cooking that out and just keep adding stock uh, until the rice is, like I said, al dente. It should be a little bit firm, but also soft, so you don't want it crunchy, but you do want it uh, firm. Okay, so we've added approximately six cups of broth, and you know, this is not an exact science, so you might have to add a couple extra cups of broth, just have it on standby. Um, even though the recipe calls for about six to seven and a half cups of broth, maybe a little bit more than that. So just be uh, aware of that. And you know, you can make it as tender as you want if you want a real soft rice, but really it should be firm, um, but not crunchy. So that's al dente, all right? So if you just, uh, I'm gonna have the camera zoom in on it so you can see how nice and creamy this is. And again, as you're adding the broth, you let it absorb and then add more broth. Don't try to pour all the broth in at once. And it does take about 25 minutes. It's not something that you can walk away from, but it's also something that you don't have to keep stirring and stirring and stirring. You can let it absorb, then add more broth. So it's not that difficult. It's just a little time consuming, OK? So I'm going to add just a little bit more broth, just like that. Okay. And I'm going to stir that in. And you can see those nice mushrooms and they've added a lot of flavor because as they rehydrate they're going to actually release flavor all right okay okay I'm gonna add our cheese right in there and our cream just put that right in there This is going to be 
um, a little soupy. This is not something that is going to be like typical rice. I'm just going to let that cook out just a little bit. All right. And I have some nice warm bowls right here. And bring that right over here. Take out my it's gonna come right over to the bowl. Okay, so as you can see it's nice and creamy. All right. A lot of that creaminess is just the natural it's not just because we added a little cream to it, it really is the, the starches uh, make it a very creamy dish. See it's very nice there. Okay, I'm just going to spoon that right in. And this is kind of um, like almost a pasta dish. This is how the Italians treat it. Okay, So I'm serving this in a nice pasta bowl. And if you like a lot of mushrooms, you can add a little bit more mushrooms than what the recipe calls for. Put a little bit of parsley on top there. Okay. And if you want to, you can even grate on some nice fresh uh, Romano cheese or Parmesan cheese on it, and it'll be really, really nice. So I'm going to bring over my assistant who is in the program, and uh, he's uh, this is Rick. He's going to come right on here and, and try this for us. Rick is a first semester student and uh, just started and uh, very happy to be here and he has asked a couple of times if I ever needed any help on the show and so yes. he has actually taken this uh, have you not Rick you've uh, you, you uh, did got it all together for me and that was uh, yes, really really nice yes you can and Rick's doing a fabulous job in the program okay so you would like to try it see how it is Very nice. You can do different things with this. And we have a few more moments. You can add lobster to it. You can add some crab to it. There's all different kinds of things you can do to it. But I'm telling you, this is a fabulous dish. Fill you up. You can be a, a one-stop dish and just eat that. But uh, as an appetizer to a wonderful meal like the chicken marsala is also very nice. Bon appetit, and thank you for joining us.